I want us to continue today with an important thought that I've raised with you in my preaching during the last few weeks, a thought which is so important that I must highlight it again. And that thought is the concept of the voice of the stranger that comes to me from outside. And I want to start by giving you an analogy from my own life. As you know, I do love to have a good argument. At one point, some 25 years ago, I used to represent employees in disciplinary hearings on behalf of a union. And I would be most aggressive and proud of it. One day, the human resource manager, a black man, sat me down. A stranger to me, really, save we were colleagues. And he said to me that he wanted to ask me a question. And that question was, why was I always so aggressive? That surely I did not need to use aggression in each case and that diplomacy and good relations could get me much further in most cases. So I was a young man. I went back and I reflected on what he said. And I tell you that his words changed my life at that juncture. I realized that he was right. That I had been acting like a hooligan. And so I changed my approach. The words of the stranger came to me from outside and the evidence that I had heard this stranger's voice was that I changed the way I acted. Do you know that I cannot remember his name or how he looked? But the point is that that is not important. It's not important what his name was or how he looked. What has remained with me until today are his words. Because his very wise and godly words changed my life. And so it is with Jesus. Jesus is like, by analogy, the human resource manager who speaks into our lives. Jesus is the ultimate known yet also unknown stranger in the sense that he is God Almighty, whom your mind can never comprehend in his fullness who speaks to you from outside of you. His words come to you, and if you hear His words, you change. Now you cannot tell me how Jesus looks. Am I right? And why is that? Well, because there is not one description of how Jesus looks in the entire New Testament. And so you may ask, why is that so? Why did the New Testament not give us any description about how Jesus looks? And the answer is, because physical sight of Jesus is supremely unimportant and in actual fact a distraction. Because what is important is auditory originated sight of Jesus. That you hear Jesus. That you see him with your ears. Let me say that again. That you see Jesus with your ears. That's the pattern. That you start to listen more carefully than ever. That you actually turn off your eyes. And turn on your ears. Romans 10 verse 17. Faith comes from hearing. And hearing by the word of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. We move by faith, not by sight. Now it's interesting, the Apostle John had the privilege to see Jesus in the flesh. And he could have given us a description of Jesus Christ, but what does he do? He gives us a description which blows the mind. He describes Jesus in linguistic terms. He says, at the beginning of his gospel, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I love it. He describes Jesus in linguistic terms, language terms. And I love what Horton does. Horton adds to this. He, he says that um, our, our reality is really a linguistic construction. In other words, that we're put together by language. He says the following. We are created by speech, upheld by speech, redeemed by speech, one day glorified by speech. We are like the rest of creation, summoned beings, not autonomous. We exist because we have been spoken into existence and we persist in time because the Spirit ensures that the Father speaking in the Son will not return void. Can you see the importance of the words of God 
Because the words of God create and sustain us and so much more. The words of Christ, if you hear them, will change you. If you have not changed, you have not heard. It is easy to listen and do nothing and remain the same, but fundamentally different to actually hear and to do something in response and thereby change. We are unfortunately a generation of spectators listening but not hearing. We must become a generation of participants, hearing and doing. We must move from spectators to participants. That is why the Apostle James, whom I love, says in James chapter 1, verse 22, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. There has to be fruit of a repentant heart. The words of Christ will always be pulling you out of the world, pulling you towards holiness, changing you, transforming your world. You see, there is a certain violence to his words that establishes his glorious kingdom in you. We have to put to death our desires. We have to take up our cross every day. There's a violence in the words of Christ. We have to change the way we live if we are to follow him. And so I want to say that only the humble can receive the word of God. The proud will vomit out the word of God or the proud will will rewrite the word of God or crucify him. You see, the light has come into our darkness and we see the light by hearing it. And we prove the light by doing the word that has been spoken into our hearts, by hearing those words. And so, Christ is the ultimate stranger whom we know who speaks from outside of our lives independently, words into our hearts, that if we hear them, change us fundamentally. I close. The picture for today's sermon is Christ's crown of thorns covered in flowers. I purposefully chose that picture. You see, we love to soften the hard and prickly edges of Christ's words, we, we try to tame Jesus for our own comfort. We move him from being the real stranger outside of us at the Archimedean point to the comfortable imaginary friend inside of us who gives us what we want. Our Jesus is more often than not not messy and does not expect much from us. Our Jesus is more often than not supremely containable and comfortable. We love to partake in his symbols. We wear the cross on a chain and we have a bumper sticker that says Jesus saves or John 3 verse 16. Or this vehicle is protected by some psalm. We attend his church. But the problem for our generation is we do not engage his words. We do not hear. We do not listen properly. We may look good, like the crown of thorns with flowers, but there is no blood to show that we handled the crown. The reality is that if we are to really engage the words of Christ, there will be blood in the sense that it will cost us. It will be painful. The words of Christ cannot be engaged without transformation and pain. Because if truth be told, the stranger whom we know to be Christ that speaks into our life also disorders our life. His words are rarely politically correct and his expectations usually do not fit into our plans. As I said, there is a violence in his words that we would rather hide under the proverbial flowers of safety and comfort. We do not want to hear. We must each day take up our cross. We do not want to hear that we must love our enemies. We do not want to hear that we must forgive our husband or our wife. And so my challenge in closing is that you take the Bible again and read out Jesus' words to yourself and read them out without any defense or any pride in your heart. And stop after each sentence and ask yourself, Have I heard... 
what my Savior wants. May you throw off everything that hides His words from you. May you rend your heart so that those words may land and change you fundamentally. May God bless you that you move from spectator, if you are there, to participant under the words of Christ. May God bless you so.